Good day, poker peeps. This is Sky with Smart Poker Study. And in today's video, you're going to learn how to exploit with any HUD statistic in four steps. To help you learn better from this episode, go to the show notes page, smartpokerstudy.com slash pod 483. There's a little text there to help you take notes with everything I'm about to teach you in this video. So the four step process, step one is to learn the definition and formula, and then the placement of the statistic within your HUD. Maybe right now, you're intent on learning the call preflop to bet and the fold to see bet statistics. The very first thing you want to do in Poker Tracker 4, go to the configure menu and open the statistics window. So configure, second option down below, statistics. Once you're here, search for the stat. And all you have to do is type in one part of it and then go through the list. Call preflop to bet. Once you click on a stat, detailed description box gives you the definition and the formula. These are two critical aspects to every statistic to help you understand exactly what the stat is telling you about your opponent's tendencies. I highly recommend that you put this information in your poker journal. And speaking of journal, if you want a free poker journal, go to smartpokerstudy.com slash journal. You could download this Word document right here. Now this journal, I have all these headings already for you with a ton of different pre-entered in topics that you're going to want to study. A lot of these topics come with a YouTube video or maybe an article or a podcast that you can study and learn from. Take your notes directly within this document. And because it's Word, you can change it however you want. And then specifically, we have a whole statistics notes section. So the work that you're doing on the call to bet, boom, you're going to enter it right there. On the full to see bet, boom, once again, enter it there. So free journal for you, smartpokerstudy.com slash journal. So once you enter that information into your journal, you want to find the HUD stat in your pop-ups. And specifically, you want to find it by position or street or when it comes to position, relative position as well. So let me show you right now what all that looks like within the smart HUD, which I recently updated for 2024. So in this example hand, we have pocket aces, we open raise, we get a few folds, and then the big blind player decides to call. Now his call preflop to bet in the smart HUD is down here in the bottom left. He calls so far 44% of the time, 14 out of 32. But you also want to find it by position. So if we open up the three bet pop-up, we can see call two bet by this player in the big blind that seems like where he calls most of the time. EP, it's probably only two out of three calls. Yeah, two out of three. But in the big blind, 57%, four out of seven times, he loves calling in this spot. If we take a look at a different player, for example, right down here, villain 266, he calls three bets as a total, 3% of the time. And then down here, it's 13%. Now I know it's a small sample size. You look at that, it's only two out of 16. But this is indicative of a player who doesn't like to call, but in the big blind, with that one big blind out there, he's willing to put in a few more chips. So it is critical that you look up the stat by the specific position that they're in. And once we see a flop right here, he checks to me, I see bet. Well, what is his fold to see bet stat? It's right here, fold to flop, see bet, 71%, five out of seven opportunities. If we pop it open, in the smart HUD, you'll see in this pop-up the total percentages for all these facing see bet related stats. You'll also see his in position percentages and out of position. In particular, out of position, he folds 75% of the time. Small sample size, three out of four, but this gives us a good basis to help us understand what the stat is telling us about his tendencies. Now that we've put this information in our poker journal, we've found it in our pop-ups by position and by street. The next step is to gauge what is your own percentage. This is what's going to help you understand what these different percentages mean in real life, in gameplay, as you're fighting against your opponents. So this current month, I played 2,500 hands. My own call preflop two bet stat as a total is 10% of the time. So if we contrast it with this player that we're up against, he calls more than four times as frequently as I do as a total. But then also if we take a look at it by position, yeah, in the big blind, that's where I call most often 16%. And interesting, in the small blind, 9%, I really don't like that percentage. I'm going to have to dive into some of my calls uh, to see if maybe I'm calling too frequently in the small blind. And then fold to flop C bet. Oh, I fold 50% of the time right here. Different across the positions, and we can even do some filtering for in position on the flop and out of position. But as a total, I'm folding 50% or half of the time when I'm facing a C bet. So maybe I flop a decent pair, worth staying in, not folding, obviously. Maybe I flop a flush draw, 
worth staying in. Maybe I flop, nothing at all maybe, but he see best, I just don't believe him. I don't want to fold. Maybe I bluff raise him as well. So seeing that helps me understand this player. I only fold 50%, he's folding 71%. A little bit more flop honest versus c bets than I am. And then think about extremes. What is a 0% stat? What would be a 100% stat or stats that are close to those? So for example, just looking at this table, we have some extremes right here. This player is the extreme caller on the table. He's calling 44% of the time as a total, but the other extreme, villain 266, he's only calling 3% of the time. This player hates going to the flop with a weaker range than his opponent, but he's absolutely willing to three bet. He loves three betting more than he does calling for sure. So that's one extreme. Another extreme, well, this player is the most frequent folder versus C bets at 71%. The same player over here, villain 266, the other extreme, he folds 0%. Now I know it is only zero out of one, but let's just think about this. What does a 0% folder mean? It means one of two things. It means either he hates folding on the flop and he thinks everybody is bluffing him, he doesn't want to give up on the flop, or maybe because he calls so infrequently, only two out of 60 times, the one time so far that he's faced a C-bet, he had a hand good enough to continue. Because he restricts his calls so much pre-flop, of course his fold to C-bet is going to be low because he only gets to the flop with probably pretty good pocket pairs and good suited connectors, suited aces, things like that. Just imagine if our initial villain right here, who calls 44% of the time, also folded at 0, 10, 20% of the time. Holy cow. You cannot bluff him on the flop, but he folds 100% on the turn. I know it's only one out of one, but let's just think about these extremes right here. We've got to always double barrel bluff this guy, especially if his fold to flop C bet was so low, way more turn honest than flop honest. So just thinking about extremes and Finding players on tables that match those extremes, it's going to help you understand the stat even better. Step three in this process is visualizing their range using Flopzilla Pro. So when it comes to a pre-flop stat, you want to build the range with their positional percentage in mind. As we saw, our opponent right here calling a two bet in the big blind is 57%. So when we whip out Flopzilla Pro, let's just enter 57%. Maybe you could stop here and say, okay, this is his calling range. Makes sense to me. 57%, same as the big line, but we cannot stop there. That is not good enough. That's not accurate enough. You want to get in your opponent's head, leave out non-play hands, and I'll just I'll show you what this is in a second, and build it to a range that you believe makes sense for the type of player that you're up against. He's a 47 15 player calling 57% of the time. Super fish. He's only raising first in 25%, way more passive than anything. Plus, because he's in the big blind, let's take a look at that. He's got that one big blind out there already. He hates folding that. He's going to defend with a really wide range here. So I bet you he's calling with all of these pocket pairs, all of these broadways, all of these suiteds. A player like this cannot fold any ace as well. These offsuit nines with a Broadway hand, those are obviously, not obviously, but often staying in. I think he can call probably all the way down to 5-4, maybe even some of these offsuit connected hands, 10-8 through 8-6, and then maybe all of these kings as well. You see players like this calling because it's a king. Hey, I could hit a second nut flush, could get a straight top pair king. They're going to find a call with these weaker hands. Now, here's the thing. Leave out non-play hands. We see from his HUD that he's uh, three bet 14% of the time, one out of seven. It is a small sample size, and this isn't really good enough to let us know 14%. It's not like we can now remove 14% of the best hands. No, no, no. We don't know a ton about him. Like I said, it's only been one three betting hand so far, but players like this, they can often three bet with pocket aces and kings. That's as far as I want to remove. Ace king suited could be three bet probably quite often called as well. The two biggest hands though, I'm going to remove from his range. So boom, right here, we have a 62% calling range, which is pretty close to that 57% that he's displayed his tendency from the HUD stats already. Let's save this as 62%. Now, one of the great things about using Flopzilla Pro is that you can do this range building with any of your opponent's ranges. Let's take a look at Villain 266. Let's look at a 
an extremely different kind of calling range. Remember we saw this player calls 3% of the time. If we open the pop-up here, he's actually calling 13%. It's a small sample, two out of 16. But let's try to build a calling range for what we know as a tight player when he's last to act and defending out of the big blind. So let's start with pocket pairs and broadways. I think quite a lot of these can call ending the action, but this player right here is so far three bet 7% of the time, and it's actually 6% out of the big blind. So we can probably put in, because he's tight aggressive, you know, players like this love three betting with those hands, probably ace king suited as well. We'll leave these out right here. He might call with these off suit 10, so I'm gonna keep them in because I don't have a huge history on this player only 179 hands, but I bet you he can call with all of these suited aces and probably some of these suited connectors right here. Tens might call. I think he would call to set mine, tens through deuces, and we can go ahead. Actually, let's go ahead and remove some of these. I don't want to see so many. Oftentimes, versus an early position raiser who's also tight aggressive, he's going to understand that this guy's got a tight range himself. He's going to constrict his calling range. Let's just give him a 15% range, which is pretty close to that 13% range that we've seen so far. Save that range in Flopzilla Pro so we can easily come back to it. But then boom, 62% range. This is our current opponent versus our pocket aces. This is what he calls with. Now we get to the flop. Queen, 10, 7, Let's enter those in right here. So on this flop, to help us visualize post-flop hands, we have to build the range that we think he started with pre-flop and then adjust it and filter for various hand strengths. So if he's folding 71% of his hands, that means he's calling or raising with 29%. So what makes up a 29% continuance range? And he's folding everything else. Well, he'll continue with any straights. He doesn't have those on this board, but he would definitely continue with sets. Two pairs, over pairs, top pairs, pocket pair less than top card, pocket jacks he's continuing. Mid pair hands, sure. Fish cannot fold a second pair. He could easily put us on ace king, pocket eight. He'll call with any tens right here. Pocket pair less than second card? Sure. At least one street. It's only 1.64% of his range. Let's put those in. I believe players like this can easily call with flush draws and those open ended straight draws as well. So we have him continuing 39% of the time. Now it's not exactly the 29% that math would say that he continues with, but here's the thing once again, even for post flop, just like you did pre flop, get in their head. Think about what would a player like this call or raise with on this given flop. When he checks to us, we're going to bet for value, hoping that he calls, hoping he comes over the top with something. Of course, we don't want him to have a pocket pair of sevens, tens, or queens, right, to beat us. But there's so much in his range right now. As you can see, that our pocket aces are crushing. And lo and behold, he check raises us to the minimum. Now, what do we think could check raise us at this point? Let's go ahead and clear this. It's possible he could be doing it with his sets his two pairs, maybe even his top pair hands trying to get value out of us. Pocket pair less than top card, highly doubt that. Not raising at least, he would check call with that kind of hand. Mid pairs and all this other stuff. But he could be doing it with his flush draws, maybe his even open-ended cards. He may even be check raising us, the minimum right here, with just the single ace of spades, the backdoor nut flush draw. So what do we do? We're not going to let him set his own price for more big blinds to try to see a really cheap turn or river and take initiative in the hand. No, no, no. We're getting value while the getting's good out of the fish. You saw all the different hands. Some of the stuff beat us, but most of the things we're crushing right now. We re-raise and he folds. And I like that re-raise. I think our initial read, he's folding so often, his raise means he thinks he has something worthy of fighting for the flop. So of course, we're going over the top trying to get his entire stack. Now, step four in this process is to play and study with a focus on the stat or statistics that you're trying to work on. When you're playing at every opportunity, make a read on their stat or their range, even if you are not involved in the hand. Let's take a look at this hand. Imagine we're playing right now, folds to us. We've got pocket tens in the MP. We open to three big blinds. Everybody folds except the big blind player, a 24, 17, calls 17% of the time, specifically out of the big blind. He calls 11% with no three bets just yet. So a rather tight collar. 11% might be something like we've already seen. Remember we built a 15% uh, range 
for that tight caller, 14.6%, but this could easily be the range that a player like this calls and defends with out of the big blind. So the work that we did off the felt looking at ranges, it could help us in the moment play against this player. He calls the flop comes 10, 3, 8. We flop top set. And then look at that. He folds only 40% of the time, 6 out of 15. If we open the smart HUD pop-up out of position, wow, he folds only 33%. It's three out of nine as well. What a really great opportunity. This is the kind of player, if we see his range, he has plenty of ace high, king high kind of hands and stuff on a 10 high board. He has a couple of over cards or at least one over card with ace X and king X right now that he can potentially call. He doesn't like folding. So we're C betting for value. What a shame. He folds against us, but utilizing the information, the stats that we've already studied, his call preflop two bet, his fold to C bet. I think this was a very well placed value C bet trying to exploit what we know about this player, his tendencies and his statistics. And that's the key thing. Make plays that exploit your read. Now, when it comes to studying, review hands related to the statistic, just like the two hands that we found today in Poker Tracker 4, make reads and gauge if your plays were good or bad. The more you do this kind of work in game with a focus on the stats and in the studies with a focus once again, and of course in your poker journal, take all the notes necessary to help you learn from these situations, you're going to become a stat master in no time. Now it's time for you to take action and please like the video if you like the video and subscribe for more videos like this. I want you to choose one statistic. You want to do steps one through four. Make sure you're taking notes in your free journal. Once again, smartpokerstudy.com slash journal. And then of course, repeat every day until this statistic is mastered and then move on to your next statistic. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.